We're good? Okay, thank you. Uh, just so we clear on who's here tonight, I'm George Myers, the town supervisor. To my left is Stephen Bedetti, councilman. Sylvia Santiago, councilwoman. To my right is Steve Moreau, councilman. Uh, to, to my right is Kelly Allegra, the town clerk. I have the highway superintendent, Anthony Feo, with us. I also have the town attorney, Dave Zagon, and Robert Doss, our police chief. And Mrs. Jennifer Gallagher, who's our building inspector. And handling the IT tonight is the lovely Danielle Barrett and Mrs. Santiago. So we live stream this so there'd be comments from people who are probably just tuning in on the Facebook. So we have a, a number of public hearings tonight that we need to get through before we get to the agenda. So the first item on the agenda is a uh, public hearing regarding the Clarkview sewer main replacement project, which has been in the works for quite a while. And it only affects people in districts 17 and 18. So the first public hearing has to do with sewer district 17. So I'll open the public hearing. If anybody wants any comments on to comment on this, we'll wait a couple of minutes and see if anybody comes in on the live stream. Or if anybody from Seward District 17 is with us tonight. Anybody? All right, I didn't think anybody would be on. So I'll do a, a motion to, to close the public here in Tambor Town to Windsor. Close the public hearing concerning the proposed amendment to an increase in improvements of facilities for sewer district 17, which is part of Clark Sewer main replacement project. Motion? Move. Roll call. Councilman Moreau? Yes. Councilman Betty? Yes. Councilwoman Santiago? Yes. Supervisor Myers. Yes. General Lantana motion, Tambor Tender Windsor. Hereby adopt the TAP resolution and order calling for amendment to the increase in improvements of the facilities of sewer district 17, which is part of Clark Sewer main replacement project. Motion? Move. Second. Roll call. Councilman Moreau? Yes. Councilman Bedetti? Yes. Councilwoman Santiago? Yes. Supervisor Myers? Yes, I'll just make some comments. This has been a long term project that's been kicking around since 2018. We finally have gotten it off the boards. It's been an ongoing problem with sewer flow on Clarkview, and we're going to replace some pipe over there to uh, alleviate that problem. And I think the folks who are having trouble in their properties will be very happy to. I'll make a few more comments when I get to the end of uh, public hearing. So I'll open a public hearing for sewer district 18. Don't suspect anybody will have any comments because they're very happy that this is finally being done. Shall I attend a motion to Tambor Town the Windsor close the public hearing concerning a proposed amendment to the increase in improvements of the facilities of Sewer District 18, which is part of Clarkview Sewer Main Replacement Project? Motion. Move. Roll call. Councilman Moreau? Yes. Councilman Betty? Yes. Councilwoman Santiago? Yes. Supervisor Myers? Yes. Shall I attend a motion to Tambor Town the Windsor? Anybody adopt the attached resolution order calling for an amendment to increase and improvement of facilities of Sewer District 18, which is part of the Clarkview Sewer Main Replacement Project? Motion. Move. Second. We'll call. Councilman Moreau? Yes. Councilman Bedetti? Yes. Councilwoman Santiago? Yes. Supervisor Martin? Yes. Chair Lantana Motion, Town Board, Town of Windsor, hereby adopt the attached bond resolution, amending the bond resolution adopted September 11, 2019, for the appropriation of 1810000 for increase in improvements of facilities sewer district 17 and 18, Clarkview Sewer Main Replacement Project, to now include the expenditure of $392,188 in grant funds anticipated to receive and authorize the issuance of bonds in the amount not to exceed one point one million four hundred seventeen thousand eight hundred twelve dollars to finance the balance of the cost of the project. Motion. Move. Roll call. 
Councilman Barrow? Yes. Councilman Jetty? Yes. Councilwoman Santiago? Yes. Supervisor Mark? Yes, okay, so this actually went down because we obtained a grant for this project. So those people on Clarkfield have been having these problems for many years. They will be corrected with this. And just as a side, some people in Clarkview were complaining about the condition of the Clarkview Road, and it was actually on Highway Superintendent Fayo's list to repave this year, but because of the work, it would only be torn up. So we move it back one year, we're gonna do it in 2022? Correct. Okay, so that'll be done then. All right, the next we have, have another public hearing. This one has to do with the uh, cannabis marijuana law that was passed. The opt out allowing adult use of cannabis retail dispensaries and on site consumption sites is authorized under the cannabis law, Article 4. So, is there anybody here that would like to comment on this proposed local law that we have about the uh, marijuana? If you do, you have to come up to the microphone, state your name, and tell me where you, your position. Good evening. My name is Pietro Daracci. Hi, Pietro. The well, president of the town of Newburgh. Okay. Be my address? No, that's good. Right. Mr. Uh, Supervisor, Madam Clerk, members of the council, ladies and gentlemen. I've been to a few of these in Middletown, Crawford, Stony Point. I hear a lot of the same things. One of which is that we don't know what the regulations are coming out of Albany. And that's a very good point. And my response to that would be that while we can't really trust Albany to do anything right anyway, we do know that alcohol, the sale and consumption of alcohol is regulated by law rather strictly. And I'd be very surprised if the laws that will come out of Albany are not just as strict with regards to cannabis, if not more strict than with alcohol. The other thing I've heard is that cannabis is dangerous. It's a bad influence on children. They don't want children to see this. They don't want to see it out in public. And let's assume for one moment that all of your concerns are 100% true, that it's all 100% valid. Opting out would still be an exercise in futility because opting out would not alleviate those concerns. The city of Newburgh, and I believe the town of Newburgh as well, are not opting out. It's confirmed that the city of Newburgh is not opting out. So they are proceeding with the sale and distribution of recreational cannabis, which means that residents here can go to the city of Newark, which is not far at all from where we are sitting right now, and purchase cannabis and take it back. You cannot keep cannabis out of the winter. You're not keeping it out now. Opting out will not keep it out. It will not leave any of the concerns, which I know include people driving while intoxicated, on cannabis, I know that is a major concern, but it is not alleviated by opting out. I hope that Albany comes up with something that will address your concerns. And I really, by opting out, the only thing you're doing is missing out on tax dollars that can be used to save residents money and keep their tax bills low. New York already imposed the highest tax burden of any state in the country. So anything, including cannabis sales, that can make those taxes lower, that can just mitigate the burden, even a little bit, is something the town should proceed with. So therefore, I ask you all tonight to say no, to vote no, and to not opt out of recreational cannabis and proceed with its sale and distribution. Thank you, Peter. Thank you. Anybody on the uh, line there saying no? I don't see anybody else. Chair Lantana Motion Town Board Town wins to close the public hearing in a matter of the proposed local law to opt out of allowing adult use cannabis retail dispensaries and on site consumption as sites as authorized under cannabis local law, Article 4. Motion? Move. Okay. Oh, cool. Councilman Moreau? Yes. Councilman Bedetti? Yes. Councilwoman Santiago? Yes. Supervisor Myers? Yes. <clears throat> we have had many discussions about this with the board members and, and the uh, an attorney and the police chief and his staff were deeply involved in this. And, um, we'll now kind of vote whether or not we're going to allow dispensaries and on site consumption. Kellen Tenant Motion Town Board Town, I want to hereby declare and propose local law entitled Local Law to opt out of allowing adult use cannabis retail dispensaries on site consumption sites as authorized under Cannabis Law Article 4 of Topic, which is attached here to. 
to give an impact on environment authorized to execute the attached part three of the short environmental assessment form, adopt the negative declaration, adopt the local law subject to the referendum, and authorize the town clerk to publish notice of attached resolution in accordance with law, hereby initiating permissive referendum. Motion? Move. Roll call. Councilmember Rowe? Yes. Councilman Teddy? Yes. Councilwoman Santiago? Yes. Vice Morris? Yes. Okay. Um, motion? So we're going to vote on this now, right? That I had not has a roll call. We did it. So the, where are we? We're not. We're, we're opting out, right? Okay. So I get a little confused there. We can always opt in. Once you opt out, so we can get back into this. And he's right about the taxes. There's a four percent tax that I think the county lops off one percent. But we just felt that until this thing gets rolling a little bit and there's some confusion about marijuana use and who can be arrested, who can't be arrested, and who gets a traffic ticket. So we're not really comfortable at this point to opt in. So at some point we may, but right now we're out. The next public hearing has to do with a, this is a general filming. In other words, someone wants to come into town and do some filming for a day or two. The filming statute, which will regulate film and filming or film activity anywhere in the town and require permit obtained from the town to do so. For example, if someone wanted to use your home to fill a film a television show or movie, they would have to advise the town by applying for a permit to do so. The town could issue that permit or not impose certain requirements in order to ensure the production done in an orderly manner and cause little disservice. This does not have anything to do with the next public hearing, which has to do with the, um, the zoning change or permitting some um, building use down on Route 9W. So does anybody want to speak to just the local one, just where if somebody's coming for a day or two? Sorry, you want to just come on up here? State your name, where you're from. Right there, that's good. Oh, oh I'm sorry, I didn't see legislative uh, minutes with us too, okay. Anthony Rice, City of Newburgh. Anthony, how are you? I'm great, and it's good to see all of you, uh, many of you that I know. Uh, so the first thing I do want to come up and we can talk about the next thing, but about this first. Okay. You know, in the city of Newburgh, of course, we have Umber Studios and other things. Uh, they've really done a professional job. It, when they are renting out those houses, that's exactly what they're doing. They vet those houses first uh, for the situation. And even when they're on the street, they give the residents and the businesses uh, as well in advance, uh, two weeks notice or things like that. And while it might cause a little bit of disruption for traffic or people that live there, most of the people in the city of Newburgh have been very, very understanding of that situation. So I do encourage you to strongly uh, vote in the affirmative of allowing that to happen. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? Anybody online there, Daniel? Okay, it's one more. Your name, sir. Mark Allen. Mark Allen. Um, same thing. Uh, renting out the homes is a great thing. Long time. You got to go with this long time. I will tell you, the people in the film is just right down your house for an AE that is exactly the way they found it. In many cases, you could. Um, so I think that would kind of be up to the homeowner. And in all the years that I've worked with them, I've never run into a problem walking to a small city or a town where there are building people are very respected. It's not like a man in a gypsy photo living in town. I think we're really good. Okay, okay, thank you, Mark. Yes. Chill in town, motion town board town of Windsor closed the public hearing no matter amending the town code of town of Windsor to include a chapter entitled filming. Motion. Move. Second. Roll call. Councilman Morrell. Yes. Councilman Teddy. Yes. Councilwoman Santiago. Yes. Supervisor Myers. Yes. Chairman, Tanner, motion to Tambo Town of Windsor. After considering all the information presented to it, anybody declared a proposed local law entitled a local law to add a chapter to the Town of New Windsor Town Code entitled Filming will not have a significant impact on the environment and thus authorize the supervisor to execute the attached part three of the FEAF. And adopt a negative declaration concerning same and hereby adopt the attached proposed local law 
entitled Local Law to add a chapter to the Town of New Windsor Town Code entitled Film Motion. Who? Roll call. Councilmember Rao? Yes. Councilmember Getty? Yes. Councilmember Santiago? Yes. Supervisor Yes. Okay, so that's adopted. Now we have one more public hearing. Yes. Okay. So this will be the last public hearing. This has to do with the amendment to the uh, chapter 300 of town code and we're amending it to to take place in four of our um, zoning districts. Um, there's been a lot of conversation and consternation about this particular project that is going to occur down on the Route 9W corridor for four buildings down there. I have been asked a number of times why I'm against the project. I'm not against it, and they're not against it. The problem with the project is that we weren't giving all, given all the facts from the get-go, from January. Had we been given everything and people had been forthcoming with what they were going to do, this probably would have been handled months ago. We had people sneaking into a building at 6.30 in the morning to work when it was a stop work order. We had people telling us they do offices, and then they changed their mind, they were going to do something else. And then they may have one office. So after a while, you kind of lose credibility. So that's why it's taken this long. So we finally had some conversation with the new owner of the buildings, Mr. Doring. Mr. Doring, you're here tonight, Ted? Okay. Well, we had some meetings with Ted and his people. And we kind of talked through some of the things that were going on. And Ted, I think, understood that there had been some problems. Ted engaged a local lawyer. He then was in contact with our town attorney, and things worked to where we can get to this point. Before this, we could not get to this point. We, myself and these three folks on the board, we are charged with protecting the Windsor taxpayers, period, end of sentence. I'm really not interested in Newburgh. I don't care what goes on in Newburgh. I'm not happy with a lot of things that go on. You're killing me with the rodeo in Newburgh, with the sound and the music and all this craziness. That's not allowed here. We take a very hard stand. We would have the police department out there shutting you down very quickly. So I really don't want to hear about Newburgh. I want to hear about New Windsor. All right. So that's the story. We were not against this project. We just needed to know what was going to go there. And we could never get a straight answer. So I think we have gotten now to this point. So what I thought we should do, and I'm going to give Ted Doring an opportunity to speak to the project, or if he would prefer to have his tenants speak to the project, that would be fine. Maybe a, a short presentation, what you're going to do, you're looking for them to do it, Ted? Dan? Or Dan? That's all right. I'm so glad I that. What do you want to do, Danny? Come on up. Yeah, come on up. Uh, good evening, members of the board and, and the supervisor of Meyer. Uh, Dan Bloom, I represent Ted Doring. He promised to pick for application in which he's petitioning, <laughs> petitioning the board for change in the zoning. To include commercial production of films in the town of New England for special use permit in the NC zone and extended to the other zones as well. The AP, a highway commercial, specifically specified in the petition. And the reason for that, and I, of course, if it is passed, and if my client then presents. Formal application to the planning board because of the plot and then the entire site plan process will commence. Now, what I'd like to do with your permission to fire is just give a brief overview of exactly what it is my clients yeah, will great. do with yep. the petition. Mm -hmm. As I indicated before, it's typically an application 
mentioned to the board, change the zoning in accordance with the ordinance. Excuse me, much consideration and approval. Basically, summarizing what we saw this present time, my client owns four properties in what we call the Group 9 W Park. And specifically, they consist of consist of Russian bowling alley, specifically 2922 Route 9W. Go ahead, Dan. Uh, the bowling alley, which my client purchased some time ago. And if this zoning ordinance is passed, and then he is issued permission, subject to special use permit approval by the planning board, he intends to use it as a sound stage for his films. And building the question. Typically, we'll be dealing with the desire on his part to take the four buildings he now owns Crescio, um, Entities Pier 9, Toyota Building, which consists of like, two buildings, and Hannaford's Marine. The, whole, the goal is to make them all sound stages to one extent or another. Hannaford, which wouldn't be a sound stage, it would be basically an adjunct type of building. I have here specifically uh, exactly the uses that are intended. First, you bowling alley. Intent would be parking area for the unit. Um, no other upgrades are necessary for the building. There Condition form acts be used as a sound stage, and the few months will turn mission to the board will turn on. First witness here this evening, future, future consultants and business partner, Mike and Clemens, will testify before you as to what's involved with the sound stage. They first need to face have to learn the gifts. They very succinctly describe it and it was and basically it comes down here. You might produce film. You know, in order to do that, they need what they call sound stages. It's part of it. It will take place inside these buildings. Nothing goes on. These buildings will be actually used less intensely. If this is approved, they were before this. Very rare that you would have the opportunity to present to the board the you know, question of can we have an amendment to an ordinance to take the new use in the zone, which at the same time will reduce the burden on the local facilities, utilities, police department, um, water, sewer. In fact, all of this stuff, there's no increase in the facilities necessary. All of the activities, prop sets, activities, park works, actors, clothing, dressing the action, all of this takes place indoors within the building. He actually will build props, he'll build rooms, he'll build inside. Then they'll take the zone. Nothing goes outside. Pictures will come on the premises time to time, depending upon the nature of the shoot. And some most of the time will be during the day. At night, the trailers are involved. The trailers are involved in the day. Now I have photographs here that were commissioned for it. So you get a feeling for how neat they look, how well kept they are, how unobtrusive they will be to the neighboring community. 
There'll be no outside noise. Be no outside light. Present time or But it did obviously involve substantial far hitting. And that, of course, results in people going home. Certainly not an interplay with the police department whenever. So we know that. Will be who served on the premises? Are caterers, not alcohol. Caterers come during the day with catering trucks, and they'll use local trees. They'll use local to use outside as well. So these are union employees for the most part. Part of the union energy, and they offer good wages, and they offer good opportunity for the local to obtain those. In fact, one of the presenters this evening was the Choice Films. They have give back programs in the community. They actually have a program they call APL. What it is is who blind below the law? Who can't below the law? What is it? They, they teach and they train local high school students. Other students who are the users serve opportunity of introducing the film industry. If they make it into the film industry, they think we're waiting. So I don't want to step by bounds in terms of going through property by property. What I've done is I've prepared outline uses civic uses of each of the properties and square footage involved and with the permission of the board and the permission of the supervisor i'd like to leave those with you for your immediate reference immediately i would also like to present supervisor permission um the photographs so that and have an idea as to my reference trail will be occupying these premises during the business meetings will be transpiring granted now in this This will be made part of the official record, all right, Dan? We'll have the town clerk put into the record. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I just remind people why Dan is handing out these photos that this is just the zoning change to permit this type of activity in these four zones. So obviously the town's looked at this, not just that 9W car, we've looked at the whole town to make the changes. So there's another process where a lot of the things that Dan is alluding to now will be actually presented to the planning board, and they are the ones who make the determination. The town board does not make those determinations, the planning board does. So a lot of the things that we're hearing now is a lot should more for the planning board, but it's okay. I mean, we myself and the building inspector, Jennifer Gallagher, we spend a lot of time watching what people are doing in town. Everybody. We're very, very attuned to what's going on. And we have actually gotten in the car and we go to places and we see what they do. So this is just the zoning change. After this step, it's approved, you go to the planning board. And that's where the nitty gritty is the meets the metal, whatever it said. So this is just about the zoning change. Okay, so I just have a little note here. Make sure you talk into the mic then, okay? Some people, I guess, couldn't hear you. Thanks. Okay. Now that you have the trailer, photos of the trailers in the set, so you'll have an idea that when they are actually doing a film shoot, 
these trailers will appear on the premises with the actors. And the actors will appear that fitted chairs for the actual food. And that's why the four buildings come into play. And as I alluded to briefly before, therefore they intend to act primarily purpose of downstage. And if in the literature that I just gave you, you will see if I can direct your attention to stage three, 2922 9 w it indicates the purposes that they intend to place it. And then at Pier 9, on the very large production studio, obviously it is well suited. And the Toyota buildings, there's actually two buildings, and again, you're going to be using them in a similar capacity. The only one that was slightly different would be Hannibal. And that's square footage there. I can respectfully suggest to the council that it is very rare that the town council would be presented with an application change of zone to obviously accommodate someone who has financial interest. At the same time, have the opportunity to, to bring in facility only, which is a for $30 million industry, believe it or not, give us the opportunity to bring that industry here in a manner in which it doesn't cause appreciation in the climate, the neighbors itself. But on the other hand, it offers an opportunity for local businesses to have an opportunity to bring who took place, supported for the employees, an opportunity for the food stamp program that they have for the underserved, bootstrap themselves literally from where they are, earn a trade that pays extremely well, to be able to come back and contribute and they have reached that goal. We have many, many recommendations, commendations on behalf of my client in Umbra. Importantly, they're, they're the expert. They're the ones that contract with the Tony film industry itself. Particular film shoots that have been done here. And, but it isn't often that we have the opportunity to amend the law something good for local business and at the same time contribute back to so many different ways. And I respectfully request this would be such an opportunity to the board to favorably on And with that I'd like to but then let me ask you let me ask you a question. Sure. You talked about these jobs yeah. and in, somewhere in your presentation you mentioned union local New York City. So I've been bombarded by people or how many jobs are coming. So I'm really interested in how will my local residents get an opportunity to have a living wage job? Because they obviously are not, and I'm pretty familiar with New York City unions as far as stage on Broadway. I know how tight it is, I know how tough they are. So one of the things that I'm really interested in is these, all these hundreds of jobs that I'm hearing about, how, where are they coming from and how this is going to happen? May I, may I defer to uh, Tony Glazer yeah, on that? Yeah, sure. Let's bring him up. <clears throat> Thank you, Dan. Thank you. Tony, Tony, where are you from, Tony? I'm originally from Fort Lauderdale, Florida, sir. Okay, and you live where now? Live in Beacon, New York. Beacon, okay, go ahead. I'm here at Summer Park as well. Excuse me? I'm here at Summer Park as well. Summer, where do you live? I also live in Beacon. Okay. Okay, so we're good to go then. Awesome. Here we are at the Council of State. 
Do you want to just go to the questions? Well, if you want to address that question, yeah, I'd like you I'd like to hear that one. I can speak very clearly to the union. Um, we are signatory to the union, Soy Sound is. Um, right is a facility that serves both the union and non union, so we don't have a closed door policy. Mm -hmm. Currently, we are employing at our stages over 600 members of local unions. Mm -hmm. The unions are local 817, which is the teamsters, casting directors, and locations assistants, local 600 camera operators, assistant camera operators, and DIT, local 764 customers, tailors, seamstresses, local 829 costume designers, park directors, wardrobe designers, um, and then you have 798, which is hair, makeup, and wardrobe, and craftsmen. And then you have SAG AFTRO, which is the actors union performing in front of the The director's guild, which is the assistant directors, the production managers. I'm a member of this union as a SAG AFTRO. Um, the directors, obviously, ADs, assistant ADs, and PADs. The current project that Tony and I are producing is employing 126 people from nine different unions. Our local hire is over 42 people. And because the film industry is so busy, Local 52, which is the Griff Electric Union and Set Dressers Union, have allowed us to hire from our boot camp program on a union wage. We are a tier one project, which means we are between five and seven million dollars, and that starting wage is forty-two dollars an hour. We are now currently employing over twenty-two boot camp workers who went from a fifteen dollar an hour wage to thirty-three dollars overnight. The union wages are amazing. They are growing. If you look at the HBO contract, which is called a major's contract, they're paying anywhere from 60 to $90 an hour. These are not jobs. These are careers, and they are an incredible opportunity for people who have skilled trades to be working without a college education. So the jobs we're talking about are hundreds of thousands of jobs, depending on the size of the production. So you mentioned 42 jobs. Is that what, where we're at? That's the local hires on our current job. Oh, yeah, but I'm most interested in the local hires. I'm yes, not really... There's 42 people out of 126 hires that are local. Okay. My next question yes. was one, that's on one job. Yeah, my next question was about a lot of talk about how the restaurants were going to make a lot of money and you know, all the delis and the pizza. And this, and then I hear that Benora is going to do catering out of the back. So, how's that going to work? Uh, we're using Pamela's Travel and Feast, yeah. the warehouse. Which is, she was in Newburgh, by the way, not in New Windsor. Go ahead. That's all right. She no, it's not all right with me. It might be all right with you. It's not all right with me. But I'm looking for the Windsor. You keep saying about the yeah, Windsor people. Food though, they're stage, right? No, but it's a million dollars spent yeah, yeah. last year. I so got that. I don't put them in that building. I'm familiar with that. Point, yeah, go ahead. That's uh, that's what I want to hear. I want to hear that we are going to benefit this community. Now, what about hotels and motels? You talked about that a lot too, how they would be filling up. Do these people from New York stay here? Absolutely. They do. Um, the HBO job currently has 429 hotel rooms for that project. We have 87 okay. on ours, mm -hmm. um, and they, they range from nightly stays to monthly stays. We also uh, are using a lot of Airbnbs and uh, VRBO properties locally. We have uh, six homes that we're renting, and that's great for the people who uh, not looking for a weekend stay from okay, Danny mentioned the lighting. There would be no outdoor lighting. For a, sound, for a sound stage production, you would not be outside. When you have a location, which we spoke about earlier, very often you would have, but it would not apply to ours. Um, the thing about Lens Avenue is when you stand there, the sound is awful from the traffic. Right. So anybody filming in the parking lot, there will be no exterior lighting. 
And the sounds, I'm sure, is well insulated, right? So the other issue that was a lot of consternation between the town attorney and Dan Bloom, head's attorney, had to do with these trailers and these tents. And I have been myself and Mrs. Gallagher, have been into Newburgh to look at all of your locations. And we weren't happy with some of the things we saw with these big tents and these trailers. And then we got down to, is anybody staying overnight? And I think we reached a point where no one's staying overnight in the trailers. That's true, right? That's correct. Okay. And the tents themselves, and when I think about a tent, I'm thinking about something maybe this way. These tents were talking about three city blocks long. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So what did you use them for, actually? Uh, there's the ones that are currently at 9 Scobie are used for three different phases. One is for background holding. Mm -hmm. So as you'll notice, we're still wearing masks. Right. Our Safeway Forward protocols for the unions require masking and three times a week COVID testing. Okay. So first time you see is a testing tent so that anybody who comes into the parking lot has to be rapid COVID tested before they can enter the building. Safeway Forward guidelines. Mm -hmm. The second tent is hair makeup for backgrounds. So the background so the have a trailer that like, keep them outside the building when their masks are off. Oh. The third tent is for catering. It's called a maskless environment on our steps because of COVID. You can't be inside with your mask off unless you're in zone A. Zone A is director of producers and lease pass. So everybody who's in a maskless environment needs to be safe, not in the elements, like for today, for actually eating in those tents for zone B and C. Would you have a tent here for catering, eating? Type thing? When COVID goes away, hopefully not. There wouldn't be the need. There's a lot of room inside, but per COVID, yeah. you have to have exterior option just like the rest of the so okay so you would need a tent to um accommodate people eating depending on the size of the production on a small production okay. you simply would not need it but on a production like hbo where they have 300 actors a day you would require COVID. okay i've had some conversation with mrs gallagher today about that and a lot of this stuff will be addressed mm -hmm. at the planning board mm -hmm. i'm just trying to get you on the record here for the zoning change sure, sure. So let me just ask any of the board members who have had these discussions with me many times, if they have anything that they want to ask or add to this. It, unfortunately for me, I become the spokesperson and everybody hates me, which is okay. So you left now. So, huh? I think they hate me more. Okay. So do you have anything you, it's just Mrs. Gallagher building spot. Do you have anything you want to add to any of this? Got it all. All right, David. Good. Okay, so I think that you know we now have what I consider to be a clear picture. Okay, and it's very hard to decide anything without a clear picture. So uh, none of us are in favor of empty buildings. Okay, so I, I get those calls. But once I explain to people that it took us a little while to get this train on the tracks, and I would, in my mind. Say Dan Bloom was was a big mover in getting that train on the tracks. You know, Ted hiring Dan was a great idea. Dan stepping up and getting involved with Dave, emails back and forth every every time I turned around. But we, the board, were involved in all of this, and Jennifer is always involved in what's going on. So yeah, I think that your presentation was well made, and I think we now understand what you want to do there. All right. Thank you. We're Thank you. available for questions as they come up. I think the next step for you would probably be the planning board. And, and I would not like waste a lot of time. Someone should come in and make an appointment to get on. Jen is in the office all the time. And uh, you get rolling. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm not going to close the pu public hearing just in case anybody wants to speak to the public hearing. But I think what I have said is that we've covered a lot of bases that have kind of had a little bit of a comfortability level now for us. And I have to have that and the board has to have that. So uh Danny, you're back again. You like my you like my paralegal. Every time I turn around she's dead. Your permission, Mr. President, I'd like to uh, present some uh of recommendation. Yeah. To the to the clerk. If you give it to the clerk, she'll put it in the in the record. Yep, she'll take care, and then she'll distribute it to the board members too. Okay, no, town clerk. Okay, yes, yeah, she'll make sure it's in the record and distribute it to the board Thank members, you. and probably Jennifer too, right? Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Thank you very much. All right, thank you. But yeah, thanks for your help, Dan. I think Ted is thanking you for your help too, right? Yeah, come on up, Ted. Yeah. This is Ted Dory from the Windsor. Yeah. Maybe we could connect it this actually make the you know, film merit. Right. And that's how it went over months. It didn't start, so when I saw you in January, building the site. We didn't have all the other pieces. Right. So then we keep adding them, and then every time we added it back. But uh finishing for only I was working on opening. Yeah. Which is a major fix. It's it not just right. a band-aid. Make it work over time. Well, we took it a little further because we didn't just deal with your corridor. We talked about the airport and some other places. So if people come, it's in place. Okay. Right? So it should be a whole thing we broke ground and you guys as well for the whole time. Thank you. And I want to thank your mother for coming to me. She's here. She got me in the hallway. Don't worry about her. She doesn't need. She doesn't need you to take care of me herself. Yeah. All right, thanks, Dan. I wasn't going to say that, but Mrs. Doring and I have known each other a long time. And she called me up and she said, hey, George, I appreciate it. I love you, everything you do for the town, but, but, but listen. Did you please help my son? I told up Ted. I said, Ted, they never stop mothers. It's never over. Right, Ted? Oh, I'm wrong. Then she approached and she said, what a good job you're doing. Yeah, of course. She started with that. She softened me up. Yeah. When people tell me that, I know they're after something. Because, um, all right, listen, we could go on all night and everybody could come up and speak. So the public hearing is still open. And I think we're kind of. I'm not good when it gets too long. I'll just tell you that right now. Go ahead. Your name? What's your name? Yeah. And where are you from? Newburgh? Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah, speak into the microphone a little bit, this part. I know for the fact I'm 72 years old. Just tell me that. Being 72 years old, my mind, making this investment to bring the business and investment to this hometown. Not stable economy and politics we are in. To bring film industry, which would be great for town of New Windsor, housing, small businesses, and much more. Your name. I would like to thank him for what he did. No, we don't like to. Uh, in New York, bringing world class motorcycle museum is a great achievement. Uh, I want to thank him very much for that. Uh, I would like to say a few words to you guys, the Windsor official. I would like to you, all of you, including Mr. Darling and you guys, work together, help each other. Now, life is a short trip, and it's difficult as it is. So, God bless everybody. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Sir. This good evening. My name is Bill Duramonti. Thanks for the opportunity to speak. Director of Economic Development for the Orange County. I'll be brief. I really just want to frankly commend the town for the way you've approached this opportunity. Uh, the opportunity being really to be able to bring an essentially brand new industry center to the town. Uh, 
uh, and to our region. Uh, I, I think uh, we all have heard about what's happening in the film, how they have been who uh, kind of take it off a little bit more specifically, because I think there's more activity than people realize. Uh, but the part I want to commend you about is we all know that this all started, as you said, because of Mr. Doran. That's great. But I want to commend you for having the wisdom to look beyond that, to uh, not just take this zoning uh, amendment, but be able to apply it to all the zones for the highway commercial neighborhood, commercial limited, as well as the airport zone. That's just for an example. Uh, we all have had many dreams about what Stewart Airport would be. We've almost gotten there in a number of them. How about a wonderful film production studio? That's a great opportunity. So, again, I want to commend you for that, um, for seizing this opportunity. And it is an opportunity that will uh, add to our tax base, strengthen our tax base, protect us from these buildings that may go away. Uh, obviously, creating businesses for our ancillary work, like what Tony and some are talking about, uh, catering and, and hotels, are kind of, uh, and of course, most importantly, creating jobs. Uh, they also tick those off in their jobs, yes, for New Windsor residents, but in my opinion, just as importantly for residents of your neighboring towns and cities that will remain nameless because you strengthen the town by strengthening. So, again, I commend you for seizing this opportunity. And lastly, I want to uh, pledge our continued support for my department and the tourism department to help the town seize this opportunity. Now and then. All right, Bill, thank you. Tony. It's, it's me again. I know. I will not. I will say some good things do come out of the bird. Okay. <laughs> the rodeo is. And then the Apollo with Tony and Summer, and then you can find me. But so I want to put that to the side because, of course, I am in support of this project because I I have seen firsthand the economic that they have brought. They are right. In and I walk over there almost daily to to their place. But I also want to commend this board for really doing the work. And again, I do want to encourage you to to pass this ordinance because I really do think that it will make a big difference here in New York City. Thank you. Thanks, Tony. One more time. Good to see you, Collins. I live in New Windsor. I'm standing on my deck on Tower Rock. You get Tony's parking lot right there. Okay, finally, New Windsor. Good evening. My name is Daniel Collins. My family and I live on Clay Avenue, and our home is directly adjacent to Andrews Pier 9. Our family is in favor of the economic growth that changing the zoning laws and converting Andrews Pier 9 to a movie studio will bring to our community. The movie industry is growing, Hudson Valley creating jobs, bringing new business and new life to the area, and we're happy to see that. Being neighbors of the movie studio is both exciting and concerning. We are glad to see that the board in reviewing the proposed changes to the zoning laws has taken the quality of life of families living in residential properties next to them into consideration. The following items remain a concern to us hours of operation and noise. With the possibility of hundreds, and everyone has mentioned here today, with the possibility of hundreds of employees working there daily, the noise level will increase with people parking, leaving for breaks, and leaving for lunch. Daily truck deliveries and trucks idling with diesel engines in the parking lot will contribute to increasing noise and decrease our quality of life. These cars and trucks will be parking near feet from our property line. Regarding landscaping and screening, we would like to see acceptable screening defined as a barrier that, re that reduces noise, engine exhaust, and stops people from coming through our yards. Simply put, due to our unique proximity to the business, a six foot wood, wood picket fence is not going to be sufficient. Additionally, whatever barrier is installed will require an access point for the town storm drain, which is located on our property. Security, one is really talked about today. In the past, we have had issues with people coming down our dead end street and coming to our property to get to the FHP9. I'm concerned that this will happen again when people hear our famous persons in the area and they want to catch a glimpse of them or get a picture. If a proper barrier is erected, this will not be an issue. Parking lot lights. The parking lot lights at Anthony's Pier 9 currently shine into all the windows and backs of our house, including the bedrooms. We would also like the angling and direction of the lights to be taken into consideration so that they do not shine into our home. Implement weather. In the past, Anthony's Pier 9 would use a bulldozer at 3 a.m. to clear the parking lot of snow. Although they eventually remedied the problem, we would like assurances that the new owners will respect the current zoning laws and not start plowing until after 7 a.m. In conclusion, we, can be, we think that these are reasonable requests and we look forward to being mutually good neighbors. I would be happy to provide my personal cell phone number to any town or representative from Ted who wishes to discuss any of these matters further. All right, thanks, Denny. Listen, um, just to address some of your things, we are very concerned about those issues, myself and Mrs. Gallagher and the board. 
And we have um, the planning board is where I would certainly suggest that you attend the meeting. We have talked about every item that you have talked about. And one of the things I do every morning is I review the police blotter that the police chief sends down. And it has everything that happened in town. Who stole from ShopRite, who had an accident, people cutting through people's property. And the chief and I address that every single day. So if those calls are in, it's not like no one's paying it. I'm paying attention very, very closely. And he's paying attention very, very closely. So we do that. But I think the fencing and the screening and the things you're talking about, that's all planning board stuff. And we have a planning board chairman, um, Jerry Arginio, been around a long time, knows what he's doing. But this is Gallagher. He's at every planning board meeting. And she's attuned to everything that goes on. And I don't think she's quite as nuts as I am, but she makes it hard work on it. She is very concerned of what goes on here. And we sometimes take a very hard line and people get upset with us. But we play by the rules. And we don't really care. I've lost friends over playing by the rules. So everybody plays by the rules. And that's why this took a while to get going. Everybody has to play by the rules. We were peeling ourselves off the wall back in January and February, yes? And a lot of things that were happening that we weren't happy with. So, but we eventually got there. But the planning board needs to hear you. Okay, and there'll be public hearings. And you could drop your number to Mrs. Gallagher and make sure that you're notified. But they're publicized, but you would definitely be notified. We are concerned about Nee and Faye and Blooming Grove Turnpike. We've had these conversations any number of occasions. And I've also had them with a couple of board members. Right, because we have one board member here as a relative lives over there. So we're very familiar with what you're talking about and concerned about. Okay, you can come back up again. Pietro. Yes. I recognize you too. Oh, okay. Yes. Uh, Mr. 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 George. Call me George. Yes. Members of the council, Madam Clerk, and ladies and gentlemen. Yes, uh, my name is Pietro. I am a back. I have been working as a background actor on the independence bill, as well as the White House plumbers and Three Little Liars, the original sin. Uh, those have been filming throughout the Hudson Valley. And I can confirm several things that were mentioned earlier in this hearing, including the strict COVID protocols, mm -hmm. even between takes when we're filming, even if we're outside, we put our masks on. So we do, they do take COVID very seriously. They do take precautions seriously. We can work folks that are eating and drinking, and we'll have a other rooms, they do take that seriously. As far as impact on the community goes, I think the worst I've seen is simply traffic redirection. They do have trailers in the streets and stuff, uh, but it's very, very minor. They try, they're, make, they're on the least busy roads, and they really go out of their way to make sure that the communities are not negatively impacted. But there are a lot of positive benefits. They do use local catering companies. They do feed us mm -hmm. while we're on set. It's really good. Okay. And what they didn't mention is that we, uh, they did mention that we have not union folks. I am not union. But sometimes what's called half heart, you know, go make somebody or some folks union for the day, and that's a voucher to get enough of those who can join the union, which then entitles you to higher pay and some other benefits. And others the launch there at the it is also a way of keeping younger folks in the area because where I have been going, we're bringing in lots of from all over the Hudson Valley and beyond the Hudson Valley. Mm -hmm. folks from Connecticut, Albany's and what come up from the city. And it puts these towns on the map so they know that they're there. They may they even move to these locations. And also just keeps folks who are aspiring actors living here, but keeps them interested it's with all the boom that we see in cinema and towns, not just a large cat and beyond. It's a great way for economic development. It's a great way, as I said, to keep younger folks in the area. So you have a lot of people leaving New York. This is one way we can try and plug that hole. And therefore I encourage the board to move forward with this project. I look forward to seeing uh, what comes from the studios. I will miss who in the camps. You're not the events there, but so that, that's changed for you. And I, like I said, we look forward to see what, what will come through. And maybe I'll be down with you and have things back on. Right, thank you. Thank you. A hey, good radio voice, man. Oh. <laughs> yes. Were you waiting in the back? I think she might have been. Oh, no, but you're here now. Go ahead. Did you just say your name where you live? My name is Cecilia Burrell. Cecilia, how are you? 
here because of the No, we can't talk about that now. We're going to talk about I'll tell you when. I'll let you come back. Don't go away. You're going to get your turn. Okay, you're going to get a turn. Okay, miss. Thank you for allowing us to speak. Um, I'm just going to read a prepared statement. Okay. Um, my name oh, yeah, I need your name and where you live. Sure. My name is Ellen Fillo. Yep. I live in the city of Newburgh. Okay. Um, and I am director of community development for okay. the city of Newburgh. And I'm here. You're going to have to do with that radio, a rodeo? No. <laughs> <laughs> got that rodeo on my mind. Go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say. I tried to talk to Torrance about it. He blamed it on Kaplan. Go ahead. Uh, Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, that's okay. um, but I've also managed the uh, film office for the city of Newburgh, and I'm, and I'm here to support the expansion of the upper stages into the town of New Windsor, specifically, as was mentioned earlier, for the continued success of the workforce development initiative below the line boot camp. Below the line boot camp provides a no cost film, film training program for young adults in the city of Newburgh. And uh, as, as Summer had mentioned, it, or Tony had mentioned as well, it's for, for other youth out within the, uh, the region. And uh, graduates of this on the job training program are offered immediate film and television production employment and a pathway to labor union uh, membership, as well as continuing career mentorship. That's another thing that uh, the local line boot camp also provides uh, that once the graduates go through the program, they still will have Summer and Tony. To provide them with their career along the way. The expansion of other stages into the town of New Windsor will provide an even greater opportunity to expand the Below Blind Boot Camp's career development program. And in addition to economic growth, the additional sound stage space and ensuing film and television productions drawn to this area will provide a continuous workforce training program for the city. Okay, yeah, listen, I'm kind of in favor of the kids of the city. That's what I'm talking about, I have local jobs. You know, I need to get these people working. Tony knows what I'm talking about. We need to get them working. So with a decent job. All right, thank you very much. Who is this? I'm Cornell. Hi. Hi there. How are I'm, you? I'm well and you? I'm pretty well. Um, just quick, I'll be very quick because it's running long, but I just wanted to say I was the first chairperson for the Orange County Partnership which is the economic development organization. And in order to do that, I went to University of Maryland and I became certified as an economic development professional. I put it on the record yet. Yeah, okay, please. Um, I will say that the economic benefit this town in Windsor, I lived in the town of Windsor, I lived in the town of Newburgh, now I live in the Falls. I am a big love this region. And the economic benefit that can happen here is outstanding. If anybody ever wanted, including Ted, uh, although he But anyway, to, to the economic benefit, the ratio, the dollars, one dollar, what does it really mean? What's fifty thousand dollars in salary really mean to your community? I'm hopeful that this project will be seen and favorable. Aren't you a famous author now? I am a famous author now. That's right. Writing away, sorry. Okay, keep it up. Keep up the good work. Okay, Miss. Your name and where you're from? Um, but I'm, I'm, of course, not allowed to speak about. I just want to speak in regards to the merits of the ordinance, which I get to. Um, I uh, think you spoke a little bit earlier. Um, I am working back on that. I also work in. She is where she hasn't been able to work in this. Um, she's been in our state lab, uh, as fun against America, etc. It's because a lot of this work is really inaccessible. You often have to drive down to Brooklyn at five o'clock in the morning, and they let you out at two o'clock in the morning. Um, and, mm -hmm. and that's really been a real barrier for her, and I'm sure so many other people who live in this area in the Hudson Valley who want to make some kind of further work. They really want to make it go this further from there. Um, so, aside from the fact that we not only create workforce development for young people for emerging uh, community leaders and artists, uh, it would also provide 
the work people of all ages, teaching my mother who is um close her age, but she uh she's at she's at retirement age and it's been a real, real benefit uh to her in the last couple of years. And um Marcelo Dan who's here and I have some of us out there. I think this is a real good use for the space for right. Thank you. Thank you. Amanda Zena. I am the director of tourism film for Orange County. I'm also the president of Hudson Valley Tourism. I come here with full support of um, making the changes to the zoning so that we can continue to film in the corridor and other corridors as well. And I realize that's not someone's phone. That's actually a real cricket that's inside uh, this room. Uh, but, um, interesting. Um, but thank you for having me. And uh, um, thank you for also taking the time to ask I'm um, simply stated, I'm very much in favor, of course, of any type of uh, project that will continue to uh, be a re reuse buildings that will be sitting there that could go off the tax rolls. And now we have some hope that these buildings will all be on the tax rolls, creating jobs. That's a great thing. So I also wanted to address a couple more things. There's a lot of local people hired, of course, and I know that's a trigger point. You'd like to right. talk about that. Um, I've talked to some folks and some owners of businesses, and they have given me some great comments relative to how much they have been successful because of filming. I'll them to mention um, Prestige Cleaning Services. They're uh, they're based in Newburgh, not the winter yet, but they're expanding into New Newburgh New pretty soon. Um, they've gone from three employees to 25 employees um, because of the film production industry. Um, caterers, of course, have been doing very well. Uh, Pamela's is doing exceedingly well. She lives in New Windsor. Her business is out of uh, New York. Um, PRG, um, millions of dollars in contracts there, um, as well as security. Uh, we talked about security, which is very secure. All of the production studios are very secure. One of the uh, production, uh, excuse me, security firms, Atlas Securities, is due to make over six figures just by one contract for one point time. So that is true economic development, and I really appreciate all the time and efforts that the board and uh, trustees have been putting toward this. And thank you so much for your time. Hey, Amanda, thanks for coming tonight. In the ring. My name is Caitlin Perez. I reside in the but I am. So, a lot of things have been said here this evening, but uh, I don't Thank you. <laughs> the crickets kind of make it sound like a big board. Um, so, I just wanted to say on behalf of the board of directors of the Orange County Partnership and myself, I'm very supportive of this project. You know, all are of the impacts of the surrounding areas and the trickle down from there. Um, additionally, I, I don't think there could be a much better partner than and Umbra, and they really are industry insiders on Hallmark, HBO, MGM, and Paramount Pictures. So I want to say I think it's a great opportunity for future times. All right, thank you. How about online there, Danielle? Yes, we have Jack. What's the name? Jack. Jack from where? Hi, this is Jack Urbis. Actually, I'm speaking to you from outside of Baltimore. Uh, okay. Oh, what's the weather? What's the weather? Raining, torrential downpours, torrential downpours. Fortunately, that means the Orioles will be rained out again, so they don't have to set another losing record. Uh, they can't lose tonight. Yeah. But anyway, um, although I've been a resident of Baltimore for 38 years now, I was born and raised in Ducktown, went to New Windsor, New Windsor Elementary School. Went to South High, graduated from NFA. I have, my brother lives over at Plum Point. I've got relatives who live on Cedar Avenue, and some of my relatives have escaped to the town of Newburgh. But uh, the reason I'm speaking with you, for the past 20 years, I've been the director of the Maryland Film Office, which is an arm of the Maryland Governor's Office of Economic Development and Commerce. And the reason uh, that that is within commerce, because the film industry creates jobs, generates revenue from our, or for local businesses, and there's film-induced tourism and a lot of other ancillary businesses. Uh, during my tenure here, I've worked on over 150 feature films or television series. 
I could speak endlessly uh, about the benefits of film, but there are two topics that seem to um, be not of concern, but of interest, and that is how does it affect the local community? Um, we had a series called House of Cards, which filmed up in Harford County, which is a bedroom community, not unlike uh, New Windsor, it's about 35 miles north of Baltimore City. Their sound stages and their offices were here. During the course of their six seasons, they purchased or rented goods or services from 417 Harford County businesses. That's directly uh, purchasing or renting goods or services from the local business. On a statewide level, they utilized 2,100 um, Maryland businesses, but we're bringing this down to, you know, more specifically the New Windsor area. Um, now, obviously House of Cards was a large production, which annually spent about $60 million direct spending here in Maryland. If we take that down to a smaller production, something like Ping Pong Summer, which was an independent film with a budget of about a million dollars, that shot in Ocean City, Maryland, which is um, Maryland's um, Maryland's Wildwood, Maryland's Long Beach Island, if you want. Um, they purchased or rented goods and services from over 200 Ocean City businesses, and this was off season. So this is when, when the tourists went away, the film company came in here. So, um, so it does have a direct effect, indirect and direct effect on local businesses. And I think that's, that's important to know. Uh, also, I mean, New Windsor has a great opportunity. Um, attracting production is a very, very competitive industry. Not only does every state have a film office, most countries have film offices now because they want the influx of production dollars. Typically, it costs state. Uh, uh, every state, not every, about uh, 38 states have incentive programs that offer tax credits or rebates to productions to come to their state. In this case, New Winter doesn't have to offer anything because the state of New York is offering $420 million as incentives. So they are handing this business to some region in New York. Uh, secondly is the fact that in my job, I'm constantly being contacted by individuals who want to build soundstage complexes, back lots, ancillary businesses in Maryland. But they come with just an idea, but no financing. So they want the state of Maryland or the city of Baltimore to provide the financing for this idea. It's under my understanding in this case that you already have someone who is willing to develop this property. And again, it's not going to cost the town of New Windsor anything. So all the town needs to do is, you know, open up their arms and uh, greet this industry as a strong, viable, green industry that essentially there, there is no, um, there is no downside to it. Um, I know that's my job to promote Maryland and there's no downside, but having been on sets in, in a 30 year career in the industry, it, it seems like it's nothing but beneficial. So um, I did email a letter earlier. Thank you, uh, Supervisor, for sharing it with the town council. I'd be more than happy to uh, answer any questions. But um, as a former New Windsor resident who comes back home probably six times a year, I'm hankering to get back home to get an ABC pizza. And that's right down the street from Anthony's Pier 9, which I've gone to many weddings. So I'm looking forward to go back and, and visiting the sound stages when they're completed. And All right, thank you. That's it. You got your letters on file. I talked to you personally. Councilman, yeah. did you speak to Jack? Yeah. yeah. So you've had an impact from Maryland. So I think we've kind of, I'm getting ready to wrap this up. I guess. Uh, sure. so, certainly. I, I just want to talk about the, like the micro, you know, when it comes down to affecting New Windsor, you know, okay. with some of the job, our, uh, revenue. So. So thank you very much. Hey Jack, thank you. Good luck in, yep. with the storm and the and the Baltimore team. <laughs> uh, I don't think there's any luck's going to help us with the Baltimore team. Hopefully with the storm. Thanks. I'm always happy to see the Yankees play them. <laughs> On that note, I will mute and say good night. <laughs> okay. Uh, listen. Hey, uh, here I go. General Intent Motion Town Board Town of Windsor close the public hearing in matter amending Chapter 300 Town Code Town of Windsor zoning to include. Commercial production studios by special use permit in the following zoning districts. 
Airport AP, Highway Commercial HC, Limited Commercial OC, and Neighborhood Commercial NC. Motion. Move. Second. Roll call. Councilman Moreau? Yes. Councilman Zetti? Yes. Councilwoman Santiago? Yes. Supervisor Myers? Yes. Chair Lantana, motion 10 board 10. The winds are after considering all the information presented to it, hereby declare the proposed local law entitled A Local Law Amending Chapter 300 of the Town Code of Town of the Windsor Zoning and attaches 1234 there too to include commercial production studios by special use permit in the filming following zoning districts. Airport, highway commercial, limited commercial, and neighborhood commercial will not have a significant impact on the environment and thus authorize the super supervisor to execute the attached part three of the FEAF, adopt a negative declaration concerning the same and hereby adopt such local law. Motion? Move. Second. Roll call. Councilman Moreau? Yes. Councilman Betty? Yes. Councilwoman Santiago? Yes. Supervisor Myers? Yes. So, that being said, that's it, Ted. Now the ball's in your court. To get no. Listen, I'm gonna I'm gonna take a just a couple minute break for those of you who don't want to hang around for the rest of this, which is really just as exciting as this. Hey Ted, the fact that you're 72 does nothing for me. I'm 78. Okay. So when you get there, then I'll talk to you. All right. Thank you to Danny Bloom. I just have a quick question. Um, I wanted the uh, graduates from the, um, the uh, boot camp. Yeah. You break the fabulous program. It's good. I lost my job. I made 80000 last year. That dollar really didn't want. This program allowed me to do exactly what I wanted.
So this is a project that that bridge they're replacing there by Gus's off to the right, and we're getting a new water pit and they're relocating some pipe I think. Even no objection, Town Board Town of Windsor received and filed the attached stipulation and tolling agreement among the New York City Water Board, Town of New Windsor, Consolid and the Town of New Windsor Consolidated Water District and the Town of New Windsor dated August 17th, 2021, extending the tolling of the statute of limitations for the additional two month period till October 21st, 2021. On claims filed against the Town of New Windsor Consolidated Water District and the Town of New Windsor by the New York City Water Board for unpaid. Water charges. This has to do with the. With, I finally got the city to agree to pay us. I think three point six million, David. Three point four. Yeah, give or take, for the water that we're taking from the aqueduct because of the problems with the wells. So I just like to thank Dave for his work in that. And that was a struggle, but I always felt that if they're paying for the city of Newburgh, why aren't they paying for the town of the Windsor? So now we are. General then in motion, Town Board, Town of Windsor, call the public hearing. We got a proposed local law to override the tax levy limit established in the general municipal law, section 3-C5, to be held on October 6, 2021, at 7 p.m. Town Hall 555 Union Avenue, New Windsor, New York, and authorize the town clerk to advertise for same pursuant to law, all in accordance with the resolution at annex here to a motion. Move. Second. Roll call. Councilman Morrell. Yes. Councilman Bedetti. Yes. Councilwoman Santiago. Yes. Supervisor Myers. Yes. This is just. A precaution doesn't mean that taxes are going above the limit and just get this in case we do, but it's not saying that we are going above the limit. So I'm hoping that tax rates stay stable and we're in the process now with the controller's office working on it. General Intent Motion, Town Board Town of Windsor authorized final payment in the amount of 37597 to MDS HVAC R Inc. for Town of Windsor Ambulance Building. HVAC contract 1M pursuant to annex correspondence of the Goey Hazard Etzel, Etzel DPC. Motion. Move. Okay, roll call. Councilman Barrow? Yes. Councilman Bedetti? Yes. Councilwoman Santiago? Yes. Supervisor Myers? Yes. Chairman, any motion to tamper with that? Windsor pursuant to the state town law, section 267.8, New York state town law. 267.11a, appoint as an alternate to the Zoning Board of Appeals, Carmelo Yanoni, 63 Myrtle Avenue, New Windsor, New York. Terms events immediately and expire the 31st. <coughs> a motion. Second. Roll call. Councilman Moreau? Yes. Councilman Bidetti? Yes. Councilwoman Santiago? Uh -huh. Yes. Yes. I need to take a minute. I lost my voice. No, you're up. Give me a minute. They hired him for filming. He left. <laughs> He's another month or two. Notice that the only one that got a vote. Oh, Sylvia's like, come on, I'm still smell with him. <laughs> now, if I talk too much, it's a science condition. I just lose my voice, and it's over. And it's over. 
All right. Chairman, I'll entertain a motion to town board town. Would you authorize solicitors permit to box pest control? Westchester LLC to solicit door to door residential pest control with services permit shall be obtained from the town clerk's office. Motion. Move. Second, anybody? Second. Roll call. Uh, Councilman Monroe? No. Councilman Bedetti? No. <clears throat> Councilwoman Santiago? No. Supervisor Meyer? No. Chief Dawes, you want to speak to this? Not only to mention that it looks like a lot of people have been there in the state of Texas. Wyoming? Oregon? Utah? It was like 10 people, so we. I thought that was a little too much. This next guy is a veteran. General Lieutenant Motion, Town Board Town of Windsor authorized the solicitor's permit to Christopher Romaine doing business as Flavor Heart LLC to sell food items such as wraps and salads from a truck at various locations in the town of Windsor. Permit shall be obtained from the town clerk's office. Motion? Move. Second. Roll call. Councilman Morrell. I just want to say, I know Chris, he's a great guy. And nope. I wish it was locked with the Flavor Heart. So oh, yes, okay. Yes. Councilman Bajetti? Okay, yes. yes Councilwoman sir. Santiago? Yes. Supervisor yes. Meyer. Yes. What does he sell? Do you know? Yes. I don't know. You mentioned the uh, wraps and stuff. So oh, yeah. I, I, the permit says Newburg and the winter. So is he operating now? I don't know. He's up average. I, I don't know. I don't know. I mean in Newburg, I guess. All right, well we'll see. Hopefully you're all right. It's <clears throat> another receiving file. Even no objections, town board, town of Windsor hereby receive a file with the town clerk, the attached summons, notice of petition, and verified petition, and complaint in the matter of stowaway self storage, number seven, LLC, et al., against the town of New Windsor. This is an article 78 that these people are filing out on that 207 Tolman corridor. We, they're not happy with the master plan, so we'll see where this goes. Chairman, I have motion to by Town of Windsor authorize the supervisor to execute the attached retainer agreement with Drake Loeb PLLC for provisions of legal defense services related to complaining entitled Stowaway Self Storage Number Seven LLC et al. versus the Town of the Windsor et al. A copy of which was received and filed by this board on September 1st, 2021. Motion? Move. Roll call. Councilman Moreau? Yes. Councilman Bedetti? Yes. Councilwoman Santiago? Yes. Supervisor Myers? Okay, so we've hired Drake, Drake Loeb, and hopefully they'll defend this 7 8. And uh, we sent stuff to the insurance company, right, David? Okay. Yeah. This is another receiving file. Him, no objection. Town Boy Town and Windsor receiving file with the town clerk. A letter of resignation submitted by John McDonald dated August 31st, 2021, resigning his appointment. As an employee member of the Town of the Windsor Ethics Board, effective August 31st, 2021. So John is no longer on the Ethics Board. There was some discussion at the workshop about should we even have a uh, member, uh, employee member. So now that there's an opening, so I guess we, you three should start thinking about somebody that maybe you want to recommend that's not an employee, and we'll move forward. Another receiving file. Him no objection. Town board town of Windsor here by receiving file with the town clerk. The attached fully executed exclusive brokerage agreement dated August 5th, August, and the 5th day of August 2021 between John J. Lease Realtors, Town of the Windsor, for the exclusive right to act as agent with regard to the sale of the town owned property located 18 Snake Hill Road in the Windsor, New York, and further identified on the Town of the Windsor tax map as section 9, block 1, lot 104.2. So We've hired John Lease. We did the motion. Now this is the contract to try and uh, sell that property over on Snake Hill. That we had a certain employee fail to sell it himself, so we had to go outside. And that employee, I was not going to name the employee, but he just named himself. Yeah. So we'll see what happens. I mean, if the board we talked about it the other day, if this isn't sold, we've really got to start. Thinking about some uses for that building. Here, no objection. Town Boy Town of Windsor hereby receive a file the attached Avellas agreement dated August, I'm sorry, December 22nd, 2020, among DP Stonegate LLC, Little Britain Road Properties LLC, and the Town of the Windsor for the multifamily housing complex, commonly known as Stonegate Town of the Windsor, which was recorded in the Orange County Clerk's Office on the 19th day of July 2021 and leave of 15006 at page 873. This is just the things that, um, Nick Manoya has to do it. That's the project that we uh, was going to be 197 units that 
is now down to, I think, 81. Um, I thank Dave Zagon for getting that agreement together for us. Hearing no objection, Town Board Town of Winds received and filed the intermissible agreement between the Town of the Winds and the Washington School District for the provision of a police officer in a Little Britain school from September 1st, 2021 <clears throat> through June 30th, 2024. That's Hardy Pierce, who's out, our police officer. He's stationed there when school is open, and he does a great job. And uh, you've been down there, right? The kids like him, right? Jim? Absolutely. And the parents like him, too. Yeah, he's probably the right guy for that job. Right? He's kind of personable and does a good job. It's another receiving file. Here, no objection. Town Boy Town Wins receiving file with the town clerk. The attached agreement dated. 11th day of August 2021 between the New York State Governor's Traffic Safety Committee and the Town of the Windsor for the period commencing October 1st, 2021, terminating September 30th, 2022 for traffic services grants. So that's $17,000 in overtime that I don't have to worry about, right? It's just somebody else is sending the money for a change. Okay. What is that? DWI, is that what you do? PTS. You want to tell the people where, where we're going again with what detail? So we're going to build the five corners. Parts that we'll be back on the thirty nine. I think the first time we issued thirty seven summons is the second time it was in the twenties, twenty five. So we haven't forgotten that, and we're still waiting to hear back from the state of New York. We asked them to shorten that that uh, turning lane because people come down there like it's the uh, Indianapolis Speedway. Hearing no objection, Town Board Town of Winds receiving file with the town clerk, the attached notice of petition and petition final special franchise full values of New York State, New York American Water Companies Incorporated contesting its 2021 final special franchise full values as determined by the New York State Board of Real Property. This has nothing to do with that. It's the Beaver Dam water issue that they always have out there. Well, I missed one. All right, that's another receiving file. Okay. Hear no objection. Town Boy Town of Windsor hereby receive and file the attached petition submitted by town residents requesting to con no control of disturbing loud music that's being played from a home on 11 Little Brook Court. This was um, about 15 residents that signed a petition about the noise, but they never called the police and they never called the building inspector. So I said to the woman who brought it to me, you need to call so we know that there's a problem and then we can address it. All right, so I did 18 and before 17. We are very lucky that I'm still on my feet. You see the time? <laughs> it's funny. It's not funny to me. Him no objection, Town Board Town of the Windsor receive and file the attached notice of claim in the matter of Catherine Dario and Anthony Dario versus Town of the Windsor. This is a woman who's alleging that she fell, but we have no record of anything. No call to anybody. So we'll see where that's going. Where I'm going. There you go. Am I on 20? Okay. This is the receiver file, the 2021 monthly reports. Here, no objection. Town Boy Town of Windsor shall receive and file with the town clerk the attached monthly reports for the following departments for August 2021, as well as July 2020 monthly reports for the building department. A little slow getting that report in there, huh, Mizzick? Don't beat me up. No, quiet. Justice Calderon, August, Justice Calderon, Justice Myers, Police Department, all August of 2021, Building Department, July of 2021, Building Department, Recreation Department, Tax Receiver, Utility Report, Tax Clerk, and the Windsor Emergency Medical Service, all August 21. Yeah, listen, that Building Department was in rough shape. We just had uh, a new addition. Stephanie Torres had a new baby, and uh, Jennifer Gallagher was pretty much up to our eyeballs with work going on in there. So she did a good job. We now have you like a little help, right? Hope besides Ronnie. Yeah. Okay. So hope well, you you did do a good job, really. I mean, I know that you were by yourself on the phones, and I always need to see you right away. A whole bunch of issues that go on. All right. The next item on the agenda is the public forum. I told you I would not forget you. I'm sorry I had to wait so long. But I'm sorry for myself too. Yeah, All right, we'll fix the microphone. Okay, Cecilia Burroughs from Spring Rock. That's right. I know you. 
Yeah, you're on. Am I? Yes, I hear you. Yeah, you're good. I received a letter from Dave Zagon. Dave Zagon. And my project. Was what? Yes. So I know that you have that problem. I know that some of our people are saying it's not such a big problem. So once we do something with you, I have to figure out what I'm doing with your name and stuff. So we're putting in for this grant, and at some point in time, I'm going to address that. Okay. I mean, no, I didn't forget you. In my house downstairs. You don't have water in your house. Yes, yes. From that creek. From the creek, it's overflowing. But, so it's on the grass going into your house. Take a ride by there on the way home, will you? All right. You know what she's talking about. Okay. I've never seen it that high. Have you? Over the bank? Yeah, told me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, listen, this is an ordinary amount of rain, but yeah, we, I'm going to take a look at it. Okay. All right. Thank you, sir. I won't forget you. All right. Um, any of the board members want to say anything? There's somebody here. Come on up. Say your name away with. Good evening, Bob. Come on. So I wanted to thank the board. Um, especially small matter, but it's just a matter of phone we'll stick it on the ground. Oh yeah, right, right, yeah. right. So for years I've been trying here and there to get it fixed. Sometimes it's not well, somebody Okay. Yeah, I know my uh, office got it. Well. Good. I would ask if somebody in the town could, I don't know, advise me to put some of the Verizon is very difficult sometimes to deal with, you know, and we, we do, we struggle. We now finally have a contact there Good. that we think will help us when we have problems, but they're not going to go around and do maintenance. They're only going to come around and fix the problem. So if we can find the problem, yeah. If you find a problem, you call my office like we did with the other. We'll we'll get on it. That's what we do. All right. Thank you. I'm glad you. Thank 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 you. Anybody else? Chair, let ten motion ten board ten to Windsor adjourn the town board meeting. I can't believe I say this. Eight forty. Yeah. Motion. Move. Second. Roll call. Councilman Rowe. Yes. Councilman Bedetti. Yes. Councilwoman Santiago. Yes. No. We should keep right on going. We should go until I can't stand.